luxury EV maker Lotus Technology is debuting on the NASDAQ via a SPAC merger this morning. Amid dampening EV sales growth, Lotus Technology is gearing up to compete against U.S.-based companies like Tesla, General Motors, and Ford. Let's bring in Alexius Lee, who is the Lotus Tech CFO, as well as our very own Pro Supermanian, to discuss more. Alex, great to have you here with us today. So first and foremost, why this timing and, and what do you hope to achieve through this DSPAC? Thanks for having me today. Um, I think today is a great day for us at Lotus. We want to use this opportunity to give special thanks to our shareholders, uh, partners, and our own employees, and also our customers. Now, today is a great day for us as in Mark Milestone. We are here in the market right now. We have been here 80 years old brand uh, with a global footprint. And right now, four models are offering the market. We are an early mover. And right now, being not listed in NASDAQ through this transaction allow us to uh, what it calls uh, execute our strategy, develop our growth potential, and deliver our commitment to the market. Hey, Alexa, this is Pras here. So, uh, you mentioned that global footprint. Is that something that's going to help Lotus Technology be because of the fact that in the U.S. there's some dwindling EV demand here, but in places like China and Europe, it might be better. Well, right now we have four models: two uh, sports car model, one SUV, and one sedan. So having that product portfolio matters a lot. Uh, these four models are currently available in Asia Pacific, and uh, part of it is also available in UK and EU. We are offering, we're having the new uh, SUV model coming into the US the third quarter of this year. So different markets uh, have different strategy and different product offerings and different conditions. But what is most important here is that we are definitely going to more markets at the same time through more models and through more stores. So, Alexis, the Electra EV, the SUV that you mentioned, I believe just started sales in the U.S. here. How are things going? Are you able to share any numbers on how those sales are? Oh, we, got, we began taking reservation orders. We'll begin delivering into the market third quarter this year. Uh, we are, this is an exciting product. We think that this is uh, a product that will go through 50 distribution network. Uh, right now, I don't have the numbers to show offhand, but uh, we think that this is going to be a key maker given that we are in a segment of 80,000 to 150,000 US dollar price unit. And in this segment, we don't have a real competition in terms of uh, performance cars at the same time with electrification options. Alex, talk to us a little bit more about in terms of this back, obviously, it's going to help with capital. How is that going to eventually, I guess your plans to deploy capital in terms of production and really execute on your strategy and your vision in terms of competing with the market, especially given the fact that there is strong demand playing out in China. Well, we have raised 880 million US dollar from this transaction. So this is a very good foundation that we have. This is a new chapter for Lotus. What is important here is that we have Al Carrington as a great partner. And they have great resources in both consumer insights and at the same time LVMH. Uh, this is a huge opportunity for us to develop a, a potential partnership in terms of co-branding, co-marketing, and others in a way to help Lotus execute a strategy and to develop our full potential in the, uh, in the, in the fast-growing underserved EV luxury segment market. Now, what's more important here is Anish Malawani, who is the CEO for LVMH North America, will be on the board of Lotus Tech. Interesting names there in the luxury space, LVMH and those, and those executives, but also uh, Geely is, is a Lotus owner. Uh, do you anticipate leaning on them for technology in the future, potentially for the, in, maybe the introduction of hybrids in the U.S. that are so popular now? Well, GD has been a shareholder and at the same time an enabler that is empowering us in a way of manufacturing, R&D and supply chain. We have worked very closely on many, uh, many of these industrial footprints and definitely our strategy from uh, when we have decided, uh, our strategy has always been on electrification and uh, going through in, with uh, six models in the next in 10 years into the whole worldwide market. So we will be sticking to our electrification strategy and definitely having GD as one of the enablers to help us with uh, achieving our targets. 
It seems like there's been a, a massive price war that's ensued. You were at the luxury end of this EV market. Have you had to adjust, even though you're going after a, a buyer that perhaps isn't as concerned about paying up, you know, up to $100,000 uh, plus for one of the, I might add, very nice looking electric vehicles that you produce. Have you had to moderate that at all? And how does that impact some of the margins that you're tracking? Well, you make a very good point. We are actually in the luxury segment. We are, our price positioning is 180,000 to 150,000 US dollar. Now, in this particular segment, customers are not as price sensitive. And if I were to look at Oliver Wyman's research, you'll see that in this particular segment is the biggest volume contributor in the whole luxury space. At the same time, it's very underserved, and we are the early mover as uh, Lotus has made that full commitment to full electrification uh, since 2018. Now that puts us ahead in terms of peers and we definitely is likely to outperform the broader market. Now based on this market research, this particular segment is going to grow about 35% CAGR uh, for the next 10 years. So we think that we are in a, a great position and given that we are less than in NASDAQ today, this is a, a new chapter for Lotus for us to be able to execute our strategy. Alex, I'm curious just real quick before we let you go, just how do you think about pricing right now? If you were to need to lower prices in order to make your cars a bit more appealing to consumers, is that something that you would though potentially consider given the environment? We haven't seen a real pressure in terms of competition in this luxury EV space. We think right now we are in a space where we are still in the process of opening up more new markets, going to with new models, and at the same time, opening up more stores so that we are able to deliver uh, what we call a uh, good customer experience to potential car buyers. So we are still at the ramp up stage. Alexia Salih, uh, congratulations on this back today on the debut. We appreciate you taking the time. CFO of Lotus Tech, and of course, our thanks to Pras Subramanian as well.